Casey Copeland. Jeff Wishart. Here. Ron Wolf. Okay. If everybody will stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. To the republic for which it stands. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, has everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. Okay, any additions or corrections? If not, then I will make a motion that we approve the agenda as submitted. I'll second. Motion has been uh, made and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The, approve the agenda is approved. Uh, approval of minutes. I don't think, did we get, we didn't get minutes emailed out to us this month, did we? Did he? Yes. Okay. Um, well, lack of uh, printed minutes and everybody here, I will make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes for the previous meeting at our next meeting. Sounds good to me. Yep. You have a second? I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Do we have any public requests to speak? I don't believe so. So we'll move on to uh, number five, presentations. Chief Lanham, I'll turn it over to you. Hmm. Is that good? good evening, everyone. Um, one of the uh, presentations we're going to have tonight is a pinning for the lieutenant. Uh, we've promoted Zach Schlater. And Zach uh, has been around the fire service all his life. He tells me that his grandfather was a volunteer at, um, where is it, Huntertown? Nope. Yeah, Hunter Town Fire Department. He had a great uncle that was actually the fire chief at Decatur Township. Zach played hockey, and uh, some of his hockey coaches were uh, firemen that, from uh, Terre Haute that also helped influence him to go this direction to be a fireman. When he was in high school, he attended um, a, where is it? Sorry about that. He attended a, uh, Anthus Career Center where he got his firefighter one and two and his basic EMT certification. After he graduated, um, he started, he joined, uh, he graduated in 2010 and joined the St. Joseph Township Fire Department um, where he met his wife, Katie. He also was, was part-time at Hunter Town Fire Department where his grandpa worked years before. All of that leading up to 2016 when he was hired by the Whitestown Fire Department in May. Since he's been at Whitestown, he's, uh, he has received his paramedic certification and he's also a full-time engineer. Zach also helped start our rescue task force program. So we're very excited uh, to promote Zach to Lieutenant. And he's gonna be uh, pinned tonight by his wife, Katie, uh, and his daughter, Braylon of two and Adrian at one month. So Zach and Katie. Congratulations. Thank you. So first, uh, before we leave, uh, as a new lieutenant, I challenge you to move forward. Think about the people in your life that supported you and mentored you to get you where you are now. And I challenge you to become those people. Start your succession plan now. These guys that, are, that you're leading are going to be looking up to you, and I challenge you to lead them to take your place. So, congratulations, Zach.
Okay. So uh, you guys all have your printouts, or does anyone need one for the runs? Um, so start with inspections and preventions. Um, and I'm not sure how, uh, how in depth you want me to get with these. I can read through these or I can just kind of talk about them uh, however you guys want me to do it. Uh, as you can see, the annual inspections for the month, um, he has uh, 45 with year to date, 276, um, which is obviously you can see compared to last year, that's a huge increase. You know, obviously COVID slowed uh, Steve down a little bit, but not by much. Um, that man is always working. Um, we have new buildings that, um, which is we're excited about. Obviously, we have 20 uh, in the month of June and 168 um, for the year. And um, alarm and sprinkler tests, which is, goes along with those new buildings, um, just one for that month, but 13 for the year. So if we turn the page to training, uh, Chief Owens, um, you know, we're, we're very, when we look at last year, we talked a lot about 2020, about the training hours uh, Chief Owens puts in uh, to have the crews train. Um, and these guys are always doing something. Even when Chief Owens hasn't set them, set them up with a, uh, a training, they're finding something to do to, to stay ready. So if we look at the training hours, um, company level training, 115 hours for the month, facility-based trainings, 22 hours. Um, do you guys understand what that means, facility-based trainings? So that's going out to a structure, whether it's a, a home that was donated that we're doing RID or we're actually burning or going up to the tower, but we're using a structure outside of the, the firehouse to do some training. Uh, we have driver operator training, which uh, we started with our engineers process a, a couple of years ago. We did an engineers process, and we decided then that we wanted to make sure that uh, not only um, are the engineers taking the test to be promoted or to, to get in that position that it was a continued education consistently or constantly always training to, to, stay, to keep fresh with that position. So we have driver, driver operator training and company officer training. So just like Zach was just promoted as a lieutenant, he's going to be continued education as an officer, always looking to, to learn uh, new things and to be a better officer. So for the month, we had 115, 153 total hours. Uh, down at the bottom, you'll notice it says uh, other division activities. Chief Owens himself attended the Indiana State Fire Institute live fire and fixed facilities instructor certification. So what that means for us as a department. Now we have Chief Owens that uh, I believe was already certified. I believe he was getting recertified. Um, he can take structures, whether it's a donated house um, or, or different structures that he can go in and put on fires and put fires in there. So it's just not something that um, back in the day, years ago, someone donated a house, we would just go out and, and we'd train in it and we, we might burn it down. Um, but now uh, they want everyone to be certified so that you're, the safety for everyone that's inside of that structure uh, is very important. So Chief Owens went and got that certification to where he can um, get these homes ready for us to burn and everyone be safe in it. Uh, he poured, we poured concrete at the, the tower to start a flashover training. So out at, uh, down at Indianapolis Airport for many years, IFD used to hold flashover training. So um, uh, an issue that we have as a firefighter, when you go into a structure, you're always watching for uh, what the how the structure looks when you're going in. You're watching the smoke, how black it is, is it pushing, different, th different things that might tell you that it's getting ready to flash over. Flashover is an event that you don't survive. Uh, that athletic club fire, as you remember, uh, quite a few firefighters died in, uh, in a flashover. So we go and we train in these uh, specific um, buildings or uh, containers that the flashover actually happens above you. So you can see it, it's, it's incredibly hot, but you can learn from it. You can watch what the fire looks like, what the smoke looks like, and you can do it repeatedly to get to see what that looks like so that you can be ready if you see it inside of a structure and know that you've got to get out. So they've poured concrete and they're building that up there for us to train in soon. And then let's see if we turn the page. Uh, billing report, um, month to date revenue uh, for EMS. Uh, $18,539 and then year to day is $102,000. Um, you know, we're, we're very happy with the, our, our ambulance service, our medics, 
um, and they continue to, to be top notch and obviously we're transporting and, and uh, it's in this paint for itself, which is great. Uh, and, when, and here in a minute, when we start talking about this new ambulance that we're buying, um, you know, a, a large portion of it, the equipment that's going on it, you know, it's so, self-sustainable, so that's, that's good to see. So if we change, turn to the next page with our monthly EMS report for June, uh, we have EMS training, monthly training, 101 hours, uh, medical trauma, emergencies on the fire ground. So Chief Wilkie uh, put on a class. So we often train um, for when we go out into the public and we help and assist the public, but we also need to also train uh, when we're assisting down firefighters. So uh, we go on a, a residential fire and a firefighter gets hurt. So uh, we've got all of our gear on <clears throat> and there's a specific way to take that gear off without injuring them any further. And that's what that training was. They, uh, they practiced taking fire gear and equipment off uh, while the firefighter was hurt in different situations. Plus our normal EMS education hours, uh, which is typically online, and then St. Vincent's Emergency Medical S Symposiums that six people attended. So that was a two-day, I believe, was that six hours a day for two days, that symposium that you guys went through? There, it was, was it one day, six hours? Okay, so it was one day, six hours. Um, you know, I guess math, 36 hours, but divide by six, six, there we go. Um, and then EMS runs 67 patient contacts, 62 transports, 28 BLS transports, 34 ALS transports, and then um, the QI, QA, 100% uh, of EMS runs audited um, and established uh, clinical skills opportunities with the ANTS and St. Vincent addressing uh, any deficiencies. Just like, um, you know, so we're constantly auditing ourselves is what that's basically saying. All the runs that we go on when we transport, the run reports that are generated via those runs, we are watching and, and making sure that we're doing the best we can for the public. And then when we have deficiencies or we see something that we think we can do better, we come back, we address it, we educate everybody, and we move forward. Um, certifications, we have four uh, EMT recertifications. Um, so the EMS ambulance, uh, EMS committee, um, with the ambulance that we're, we're purchasing, they developed initial specs and awaiting uh, formalized uh, document on that. And then they obtained the final quote for the ALS monitors from Zoll. So there's a couple of different monitors that they were looking at and uh, they finally came down and took a vote after having hands-on uh, with the equipment, and they, they have chosen Zoll to move forward for the new ambulance. Um, analysis and review of video endotracheal innovation device recommended and developed, and then analysis and review of, of the pelvic splint device recommended development and place in service, and placed in service. So just new equipment that we've purchased and that's already in service. The civilian paramedic, uh, Pro hiring process, and now is, um, are we going, is this at the point that we uh, vote on that, or will that be later? That's under new business. That's, That's under new business, thank you. Um, so we've completed the written, completed the practical, um, assisted, um, and we also um, did the interview portion as well, and verified and summarized the results, which you guys all, uh, have seen and it, uh, they've been obviously presented to the fire chief with our recommendation. So if we go to the uh, pie graphs for the, the totals of runs, we can see that um, the A, B, and C shift are, are almost identical on run load for the month with a total of 108, uh, with 579 for the year. Uh, where well, it looks like A shift is running a, a few more runs than uh, B and C shift. <laughs> this is A shift. Go get, go figure. Um, station uh, Station 72 is is outpacing uh, Station 71. 68 runs to to 40, as you can see. And year to date, they're outpacing them 363 to 216. Monthly call type. Um, looking down at the bottom. Um, with fire EMS service calls and false alarms. Um, 
So if we turn the page, the EMS runs. It's pretty uh, typical of what we have for, for the year to date, uh, more, B, more ALS than BLS, uh, which is good uh, for EMS, and um, uh, resident to non-resident. Uh, it looks like we're having more non-resident than resident, which is typical for the year, obviously. And then on the last page, out of district calls for the month, um, we're running, it looks like, more into uh, Lebanon than uh, Zionsville or anywhere else. And uh, the EMS, EMS runs more than anything. Any questions on any of that? I know I went through it kind of quick, hopefully uh, not too quick. Sure. So uh, as part of the update, um, would this be an appropriate time for me to update you on the Task Force 1? Or would that be later in, is that new business? I would say that we do that now. Yeah, I think it's part of the update. Okay. Chief Westridge uh, sent me an email, and, and uh, I'll read it. Um, he said, simply put, the team is split into two, working 24-hour operations with seven other FEMA uh, task forces. Actively locating, accessing, and removing victims. Uh, Chief Westridge is uh, a task force leader on this deployment, and this is his first deployment as a task force leader. He's a task force leader on this deployment and, and leading half of the team. Uh, Lieutenant um, Joseph is a rescue specialist, and uh, paramedic Legier is a logistics specialist, uh, specifically managing, transporting, and maintaining equipment, and he is an um, Paramedic Legier is also a driver for one of the box trucks. Speaking candidly with uh, Chief Westridge, he, he's exhausted. Um, he said he averages about three to four hours of sleep a night, um, and it's, it's some long, long hours. He's working uh, midnight to noon every day, um, and they are actually staying on a, um, a cruise ship, and that's where he goes to sleep and to be fed. But um, he said it's, it's very, very tiring, but um, he's very proud of the work they're doing, and, and Nathan and uh, Billy are doing very well. So any questions on any of that? Do we know how long they'll be deployed? No. Um, no. Uh, that, that's always a uh, question that I ask. And uh, he, he said typically they, they try to keep it 10 to 14 days just because of exhaustion. Uh, they try to rotate people in, but... Um, he really doesn't know. I just send him our best and tell him thanks. I will. Absolutely. Any other questions regarding the statistics and updates? So uh, one other thing, if you, if you don't mind, that I want to say as part of an update uh, that wasn't part of our training hours uh, that I could have added in as an administration, uh, Chief Crafton has uh, started at what's called a succession plan. You know, I talked to um, Lieutenant uh, Schlater about um, start your succession plan now. Start teaching those uh, that um, you lead to take your place. And, you know, it wouldn't be right for me to tell him that if we're not doing the same thing. So as administration, we, we've had two meetings already and are talking about how we educate and teach and mentor uh, the firefighters and officers at Whitestown to take our place. So we're doing that as well.
session. I'll make a motion to certify the executive session. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any other further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Sir, um, we have four people on the list. Um, should I name all four, or just uh, the the person that we're interested in hiring? You can, you can make a recommendation to the board's consideration. If you have somebody that you think that should be hired, or you know, well, I would like to make a recommendation that uh, we make a list containing all four individuals, and then a rec and also a recommendation that we hire the, uh, one of the four. Because we would like to be able to use this list next year if we hire again. Typically, we'd keep the list for a year. So, the, my, I guess my recommendation would be that we make the list. I think we split it into two then. Okay. First the list and then second, recommend who you want to then Okay. So, I'd like to make a recommendation uh, to, to um, make a list of the four individuals uh, Jeremy Vardaman, Derek Holmes, Bree Study, and uh, Darren Hendershot. Uh, for a list of possible hiring at the Whitestown Fire Department. Any questions for the Chief of the Board? No, just uh, these are all people that we would hire, let's say your number one candidate dropped out. Yes. Number two. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. You're right. I'll, make a motion. <laughs> I'll second the motion. Any other discussion? I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I would also like to make a motion that we, uh, a motion to hire Jeremy Vardaman as a civilian paramedic for the Whitestown Fire Department. Now, this is a letter from Brad. We, can we approve this or do we need to give a Do we need to give a recommendation to the so I, before you answer that, I think I need to uh, adjust my recommendation. It's a recommendation to offer a um, conditional offer of employment pending on a background check. So that's my, I'm sorry, that's my recommendation to give a con conditional offer pending on a background check for Jeremy Vardaman. I'm new to this. The board, the board is the hiring authority. So okay. you, can, you can make the call as long as it's have a position budgeted by the town council or the person that you're hiring for you got that budgeted. Okay. Any questions? Vardaman. V A R D A M A N. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No, I just think if he's the number one on your list, I think he's gonna be a great fit. I want you guys to have a strong team, so thank you. So do we. Other questions, and I'll make a motion to uh, give the go ahead for the conditional offer to Jeremy Gardner. And I will turn the pending background check. I'll second. Any other questions? Discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Last thing is heartache. Uh, no, that's not true. That's a joke. Um, we love it. We love the station. It's it, if you've been by and seen it, it's beautiful. It's going to be uh, when it's complete. We're going to be very happy with it. Um, so we had a walkthrough yesterday. Um, they are working on the the remaining windows on the front of the station. That um, at the top of the station, they're they're um, I don't I don't want to say fake windows, but they're um, can't think of the word. It's a facade. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Yes. They're, so they're working on those. To, uh, they were working on those yesterday. Uh, they continue to work on the, the uh, bay stairs. But uh, all in all, it's it's coming along quite well. It we do feel and truly believe that they will meet the 25th 
uh, which is the um, significant completion by June the 25th. I'm sorry, July the 25th. We do feel that we'll make that date. Uh, so we're excited for that um, and we're ready to move in. The, um, I'm trying to think what the, the latest, the, the windows they were working on and um, there's a lot of touch up. The third floor is almost complete and they've asked us because all, we went through and had a walk through already. They went back and touched everything up and they're starting from the top and working down. The things that are remaining that need to be addressed are the opening the administration windows and the third floor windows that actually open. Uh, those frames, they've been waiting on those to come in. Um, according to Graber, those are in now and they'll start installing them soon. So those are the big items that um, need to be addressed. Finally, like good to see. Yes, the line. we've seen that little absolutely. bit. Absolutely, I know, like, absolutely. And, and um, as you know, or, or maybe you don't know, we've added um, uh, Matt Kahn, the company that built the Little League. They are sending a, a job supervisor every day to assist. That was part of uh, Graber's agreement that they would allow them to send a supervisor to assist to manage. The, uh, so they will have someone there every day. Uh, during the, these last three weeks until the 25th, until the co uh, construction is complete. So that should help speed things up as well. That's a different builder for the Little League, right? Yes. Who's paying for that? The Graver. Yeah, that's part of the contract they agreed to. They are paying for that. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. The lights look good. We like the red lights. Yeah, they do. Uh, I agree. And that lighting uh, will also, the same companies coming in to put lights in the tower windows. Um, and uh, all of that will be, is all LED that's connected and um, it is, we're able to alter the color. You know, if it's uh, October and it's cancer awareness, we can do pink, um, you know, and things like that. So we're excited about that. Really yeah, the bay floors look really good. The, the bay doors were so excited about. You know, the, the station overall, I, I can't wait to walk you guys through and brag on it because it's, it's a very nice station. We're excited. Now, those are they open to the side? Mm -hmm. If they're accordion? We pulled in the parking lot about a week ago just to look at it. And I didn't see how we get a ladder truck in the doors. <laughs> <laughs> right the yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they open in about four seconds. Yeah, yeah they just accordion open. Yeah. Yeah, they're very nice. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just a little. Okay. Any other questions for the chief on the station update? Thank you very much for that. Sure. Hearing no other discussion, I will entertain the motion to adjourn. So motion. I'll second. A motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed?